Okay, it's Dr. Smith. I'm going to try not to hack up a lung um, while I talk about some various uh, sort of examples for uh, potential electric potential and electric field uh, and, and that kind of thing. So um, I want to, you know, I have some requests to do a few of these, so I'm going to try to go through some and sort of show you how these things work in, in various situations. So the first one I want to try here is a charged sphere. Okay, so let's say this is a sphere of, wow, that is the worst sphere. Wait a minute, I can actually do circles here, so let's try, and if I do that, then hey, not bad. Okay, so, whoops. Okay, so let's call that our sphere. Okay, and I'm going to say, no, I don't want that color. So I'm going to say the charge is a uh, charge of... Um, I'm going to say it's it's capital Q, just to say, you know, it's positive. Um, and it is, you know, distributed around the outside here. So it's sort of going to be, you know, obviously it's going to go to the edges of the sphere. Sphere can be, uh, well, it can be it can be hollow or it can be solid. It actually doesn't matter um, because, well, it's a sort of a special case where it doesn't matter. So let's look um, then and let's say, you know, uh, this is, you know, our y-axis, of course. Here is our x-axis. Um, and we're just going to look at sort of the xy plane, although it's a sphere, obviously it's 3D, so this problem works in 3D as well. So, first of all, the electric field, um, and it's, you probably know by this point um, what the uh, electric field around a, a you know, a, a point charge is, or a, a sphere, um, but this is this is sort of a shell theorem, Gauss's law type thing. Basically, we took uh, if we take our um, you know our our test charge of positive Q right then put it right there. We find the force acting on it, and let's say it's at a position R. Okay, so uh, Q at this is a charge plus Q at position force. Nice. Okay, position R. Okay, then the force acting on charge Q, the electrostatic force, is going to be, of course, ye old K times Q, big Q, little Q. There's an R hat for direction, and it's all over, well, I can't write today, R squared. So it's K, big Q, little Q over R squared. The R hat gives you direction for the electrostatic force, which means then the electric field, and I will do that in blue, um, the electric field is, well, you remember how we get this. So the electric field is electrostatic force, and then you divide it, well, let me do, let me, yeah. Electrostatic force divided by Q. Okay, so um, I'm going to start, I'm going to sort of write down, like, results. I'm going to write down results over here, sort of stack them up under the stuff we know. So... To start off, the electric field around this guy is going to be, well, we're going to take our electrostatic force here, divide by our little test charge Q, and what you'll get is then K times big Q over R squared. And it's a vector, points outward. You know, this just gives you the, this is, uh, well, this gives you the electric field. Um, if I want to draw, I'm going to draw some electric field lines. Field lines. Uh, in blue, and you know, obviously, the electric field from a a, uh, a point charge or a sphere um, always points outward, right? So the electric field lines are simply going to go straight out from it. I'm going to draw eight, and I'm going to draw them at these sort of, you know, off diagonal things, off diagonal directions like that. So um, ugly, 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 but hey. What else is new, right? It's me. Okay, so our electric field lines, you know, go straight out from the surface like that. Um, inside, there actually is no electric field, right? So this is very important. Um, come to think of it, I probably should have made a bigger deal out of this. So outside the sphere, this is our electric field. However, uh, I want to actually bring this down here and uh, so I can put some little notes on this. And this is true if you are outside the sphere. So I'm going to say, um, in fact, now I'm going to move this around. I want to, to specify 
whoops, I want to specify what the, wow. You know, I grew up with computers, but you wouldn't know it from what I'm doing here. Um, and I'm also old enough that it used to be that when you said you grew up with computers, it actually meant something. It wasn't just everybody, of course, knew how to use a computer, blah, blah, blah. Knowing how to use a computer. Jeez, I sound old. All right. So I'm going to say the sphere has a uh, radius of capital R. Okay. So this is our charged sphere. And it has a radius of capital R. Okay. So where was I going with this? Well, what I'm saying is this is the electric field if you're outside of the sphere, right? So if you're outside of the sphere, then this is your electric field. And I'm saying, so this here is for uh, the case where your r, your little r, which is your, your magnitude or position vector, is greater than big R. So you're further away than the wall of the sphere. But if you are closer than that, the electric field is zero. So this is for r less than big R. Um, and, and I don't know what happens when you're equal. That's that's kind of strange territory. Okay, so um, that's all well and good. How much time have I used? Oh, still only about five minutes. All right, so uh, what I want to do now is look at, okay, fine, what is our electric potential now? And, well, let's see. So let's start with what's our potential energy for this test charge of plus Q. For the for the test charge of plus Q, the potential energy for the whole system, or the electrostatic potential energy for this guy plus this thing, is K times big Q times little Q over R. So this is a result we've gotten, you know, we got it for gravity originally, and now we have it for, um, you know, we've done it for electrostatics too, and sorry about that, I realized I had the, the little bar in there. Um, so, but, but you can't really derive this result from the force without using calculus. Uh, we don't have calculus. You know, we're not going to use calculus here. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to sort of recall this canned result we got. This means um, that, you know, when you're very far away, when R is infinity, potential energy is zero. Um, now we do remember, I hope, that potential energy is all relative. So this is true provided you're taking the convention that um, that u equals zero at r of infinity. So when r gets r gets very, very large, potential energy goes to zero. And this says if you brought a positive test charge in closer, um, you would be increasing the potential energy of the system. And that makes sense if you think about it. If you bring the test charge closer, you have to do work to bring it closer because the test charge is positive and this thing is positive. Um, and, and, you know, all this math will work, incidentally, if big Q is negative or if little Q is negative. Um, but I'm just saying, if we assume that big Q and little Q are both positive, then this works out positive, and so we have positive potential energy. And so if you bring in this positive charge, you put more and more potential energy in the system. And you think about it, if you brought a positive charge close to this guy and let it go, it would be repelled and would go, you know, it would get shot off. All that potential energy would get converted into kinetic energy and it would shoot away. And the closer you bring it before you let it go, the farther or the harder it's going to get shot away. Okay, so this is uh, potential energy there. And then, let's see, uh, right, so to f convert from that to, uh, to electric potential, Electric potential, I'm going to do that in purple for reasons that are known only to me. But you convert, no, actually I don't even know them, but you convert to electric potential by taking your electric potential energy and dividing it by your test charge. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is say your electrostatic potential energy, electric potential energy, I'm sorry, electrostatic potential energy is this. Your electric potential, we're going to take this expression here, plug it in there, and so your electric potential around a point charge of strength Q is KQ over R. However, let's think about this. Um, does this apply everywhere? Well, it applies everywhere that this is your electric field, which means it applies everywhere where you're on or outside the surface. So this is true for R greater than 
the radius of your sphere okay so everywhere out here outside of the sphere this is true when you're inside the sphere well let's think about it when you're inside the sphere the electric field is zero right and if you think about it when the electric field is zero um, I showed you at some point and I don't have it handy but I showed you that the electric field basically points in the direction that's downhill um, and the, the stronger the electric field is, the faster your electric potential is changing as you move. Okay, but so let's think about it. the electric field is zero in here. What that means is, well, the stronger your electric field, the steeper the slope of your potential curve, right? What that means then, if you have a zero electric field, is that your electric potential inside is flat. It's a constant. And what that means is um, actually on this surface, on this surface here, um, V equals KQ, eh, okay, equals KQ over big R, okay, and that is, that is also going to be the same potential everywhere inside here. So this is true for R less than or equal to big R. And incidentally, you'll notice that if you are right on R equal to big R, then this expression would also work too. So you can do this, and you can have this greater than or equal and less than or equal to condition here, and that works out fine, because if it's equal, they're both correct. So your electrostatic potential, or your electric potential, increases, 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 increases. When you get to here, it stops, and it's flat. Okay? So... Um, everywhere in here you have a constant electric potential or a constant voltage when you're outside it decreases so if you wanted to draw um, equipotential curves they would look something like this okay they'd be circles and so each of these would have a different uh, potential all along potential would be identical all along this but each of them, each of the curve would have a different one. But there are no equipotential curves inside here. The best you could do is you could, you know, color in all the places that have the same voltage inside here, and then you'd be filling in the entire thing purple. Okay, so you know that's just messy. So we don't do that. Um, so so it's a flat potential in here, and then out here it, it tapers off. And if you wanted to do a plot. Um, I'm going to sort of sketch out what the plot might look like. If you did, um, so I'm just going to do sort of a one-dimensional thing and say here is voltage and here is your position R as you go outside. So starting right here, I'm going to say the bottom is V equals zero and this is R equals zero here. And I'm going to say right here is R equals big R. Okay, so when you're on this this point right here, R equals big R, this is the surface. And there's some surface voltage here, okay? Um, actually, I should probably just do a dot there. And then when you start moving out, it trails off. Now, let's see, it would be, when you get twice as far, it would be about half as much, and then another half. It's going to look something like this as you move outward from the surface. But inside, whoop, flat, okay? So this right here is the surface of the sphere. If you're in the center of the sphere, anywhere inside the sphere, you have the same voltage. When you leave, it starts trailing off. And this here is V equals K big Q over R. Okay, that's this curve. Wow, that is the worst arrow ever. Okay, well, okay. And this flat line here is V equals k big q over big r okay so your voltage increases 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 like this until you get to the point where little r equals big r and then it stops then it flattens out okay anyway i hope that sort of explains some things about this um how this works um i will uh i'll, I'll do another example